Well, sorry for that weird cut. I uh, got interrupted by someone coming down and uh, being loud for a while. But uh, yeah, they're off and doing other stuff now. So anyway, where I stopped off, I hit just 700, which, uh, geez. So I actually slapped this dude right up here. Uh, the first one, actually, now that I think about it, um, this whole thing wasn't uh, framed super well, so I'm going to just throw that out. But I started at, um, what was it, uh, 670. So I did about 30 cuts, and it was still going. So no big miss or anything. But, uh, yeah, let's uh, get some more cutting going on. I really wasn't expecting this uh, D2 to uh, end up being quite the champion that it is. Um, like I said, I've uh, already tested um, CJRB's uh, D2 and got around 300 or 320. And uh, that's kind of where I expect D2 to be. But that being said, about my only uh, experience with D2 is from the Chinese manufacturers. Uh, I know back in the day, um, some folks like Benchmade, uh, did use D2 on some of their uh, knives for uh, some of their higher end, but that's when uh, their high end was uh, 154CM for the most part. And it kind of seems like those days are long gone. Hmm. Don't know if I'm happy with that or not. Yeah, it seems to uh, slice. It's just not super push cutty anymore. All right. But yeah, uh, I haven't really had experience with uh, American or I guess even Custom Maker D Custom Makers D2. Um, I don't know that. Uh, a whole lot of custom makers really use D2 because it is kind of uh, a little bit more difficult to machine than um, some of the other steels that uh, they like to use, like AEBL and stuff like that. Keeps feeling like it's not going to last too much longer, but uh, not quite sure, because um, that's what I thought for like the last 300 cuts of this 14C28N previously. I did just recently dump my uh, amount of twisted sisal fibers because uh, I had a whole giant paper sack full of them, like a grocery sack. And I'm like, you know, that stuff, um, especially like this with uh, all the air in between it and everything, it makes a, a fantastic accelerant. Um, I probably shouldn't keep that volume of it around um, indoors so I got rid of it and just 
toss it in the trash along with uh, lawn clippings and all sorts of other stuff that we uh, throw away that's vegetative. I do think that uh, this whole cutting thing and uh, decoupling from the table is working out a lot better now. That certainly makes me happy. Watching the first couple of those was uh, pretty painful. Like the first one or two wasn't all that bad, but uh, I was recording on my Android phone. Uh, so the audio was incredibly low. Whereas, uh, I mean, at that time, uh, I was mostly recording on my iPhone, which is what I'm still doing right now because it actually gives me 4K60, uh, unlike my Pixel XL, so that's kind of why I'm going that way. But obviously I've added a whole bunch of extra crap along with it. This light over here that's uh, kind of bouncing light off of a wall so I don't get like an amazing amount of glare from uh, shiny, shiny knife blades. I can still get a little bit of it if I just hit it right, yeah. <laughs> and a couple of microphone stands. I wanted to actually hold on to this microphone here. And then this one, which I do for my cut testing videos, and if I need something higher up, is uh, another microphone stand that's all decoupled from the uh, table so it doesn't uh, shake all about. The microphone, um, if you had uh, seen or watched any of these previous videos, was um, super crazy. Uh, it would get a lot of the uh, internal sound of like the uh, the tension springs on uh, the uh, the microphone arms that I was using. <laughs> so yeah, and it was basically because it was connected onto it, so there wasn't really a whole lot of me getting rid of it with um using a uh oh using a shock mount for the uh the microphone so yeah just decoupled it from uh the table and seems to have done the job and because i'm not you know doing any live performances these uh microphone stands are uh fairly damn cheap because all they have to do is Hold up a microphone and a cell phone. So, yeah, I'm all sorts of happy. The, uh, the one that holds my phone here, uh, unfortunately, sticks out uh, a bit from the rest of my desk. Uh, and I don't have enough proper room behind it to kind of put it there. So... I do need to essentially uh, set it up every time that I do want to use it. But it's a decent price to pay. I have a uh, closet that actually has our uh, heater, air conditioner kind of thing in there. And, uh, you know, I can store it there pretty darn easily alongside my... Uh, light bulb changer because um man trying to change light bulbs on a vaulted ceiling is a gigantic pain in the ass if you don't have the correct tools for it and uh I'm not talking about a ladder either i mean that's kind of useful but it's much better to have a uh, very long pole And, uh, yeah, that works out quite well. Man, 
man, oh man, oh man, oh shivets. Seven hundred and sixty. So, geez, I'm pretty sure that you know, as I was kind of um, postulating with uh, the fourteen C twenty eight N guy, that uh, possibly it was during the uh, the low part of a uh, production run. And they ran out of steel and maybe grabbed whatever else might have been on hand, like S90V, because that was kind of right around where that would perform. But uh, to have it reproduced with a different steel, um, I guess that really speaks to uh, Tucson's ability to uh, heat treat these things correctly. I will say with the caveat of that of, yes, they apparently know exactly what they're doing with 14C28N and D2. And they're learning with other steels. Um, like I said, uh, or like I have said uh, previously in my notebook here, I did do a, uh, a Tucson test on M390 with the, uh, the 128, 129, 129 uh, and got 500 cuts out of that which uh, you know made me quite a bit happy um, at the time and then I did obviously the uh, the s90v fang tooth and got 730 out of that and I was super happy with that because that worked a heck of a lot better than my uh, Tucson TS-128. A little tiny Tepe design. Um, uh, titanium and carbon fiber frame lock that had S90V on it. Which was the first one that I had in S90V from them. And uh, that did not perform very well. I'm sure you've probably seen... Uh, kind of the results of that, but, uh, I got about 300 cuts out of it, which with my particular angle and the sharpening and the, uh, the thinner kind of, uh, rope, uh, basically could be kind of matched to the experience that, uh, Pete over the Cedric and Ada's channel, um, kind of experienced where he got 200 cuts out of it. And yeah, that steel was a lot softer, but uh, this guy in S90V is a horrendous mess to try to sharpen, but man, does it stay sharp. But as I'm experiencing, at least with, you know, this particular use case of cutting sisal rope onto a polymer uh, uh, cutting board and then slicing paper until it snags, it's handling it with just fantastic amounts of uh, cutting performance, which, hey, that's great. But uh, like I said, these things are performing better so far, both 14C28N and D2, than the super steels that they've been putting in some of their other knives, M390, S90V, blah, 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 whatever. Um, I know they're using S110V and uh, I think one or two very, very new Tepe designs, um, which is kind of interesting to me. But in general with Tucson, I do want to kind of wait out a little bit when they uh, they have a new steel that they're uh, working with. Obviously, they do like to um, use a lot of those different steels, and that's fantastic. But uh, as the, uh, the early S90V blades kind of showed, they weren't really doing a fantastic heat treat on them um and i guess you know they learn a little bit by doing so uh 
That's why something like this works out a heck of a lot better. You know, like three times the cutting performance of uh, what their initial ones were, which uh, kind of performs the same as uh, a lot of other companies' D2. So, yeah. That's why um, I think I had mentioned in the review of this guy that there's an S90V variant of this as well. But I'm a little wary because, uh, well, it's a little bit of an older design, so I don't know exactly how that steel would perform and or if it would be better or worse than this one that's in D2. <laughs> so, yeah, just kind of interesting uh things that are going on in general but uh yeah this is um i can tell you these things uh really do give you a lot of value for uh what you're actually paying for them even though the price is going up on them uh like this guy this is the uh the ts89 um and i got a hold of this guy for uh i think i won the ebay auction for it for uh 33 dollars which for that it's just an outstanding uh, amount of value for it with with how this is performing and everything. But it seems as though probably a lot of people are um, getting uh, more and more interested in Tucson's, probably from jackasses like me and everybody else who keeps talking about them and saying they're, uh, they're actually pretty cool things. So uh, those eBay auctions keep going up and up and up. Uh, I haven't seen the uh, the 89 here in G10 listed for a little while, but um, I'm going to guess that it's probably going to sell um, like a lot of the other uh, G10 knives that they're selling now. They probably go for around 50 or 55 or so for the auction, depending, of course, on the exact model and how um, how in demand it might be. But uh, yeah, it's... I mean, it's good for the company, but uh, kind of makes me sad that I can't quite get a hold of them for quite the same deal that, as I used to. But, uh, oh, well, they're still a fantastic deal at the prices I am paying for them. So, hooray! <laughs> Alrighty, well, I will do some more cut cutting with this thing soon, and uh, it won't be quite so damn long in between those, now that I finally have a uh, setup that I'm really happy with. So... With that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, yo.